Hi, I'm Beth and Lation, and I'm going to guide you through this video which explores how science and technology-based solutions marry with media to support and regulate health and well-being. The coronavirus pandemic and the continued levels of restrictions in place across the globe is an unprecedented situation that continues to affect our lives. It will be hard to gauge the full impact the situation is having on children and young people's mental health and well-being until we emerge from it. Technology has also become essential during the COVID-19 pandemic, with people relying on technology to learn, communicate and stay connected. The amount of time children are spending on their devices isn't just concerning parents anymore. Scientists and governments across the world are now taking an active interest in the effects of this behaviour. Studies so far have found that too much time spent on smart devices and the internet they access is causing problems in several areas of children's development. Many parents also report increased behavioural issues after their child has spent a long period of time on a smart device. From the blue glare of the screen through to the content they are engaging with, there is strong evidence of a connection between prolonged periods on smart devices and the negative influences on health and well-being. But with this being such a modern issue, how are we going to deal with it? Although these devices are a new addition to the world, the core problem of how to provide our children with a healthy life and to teach them self-discipline and awareness is definitely not new. If you speak with grandparents and great-grandparents, they will tell you all about the parenting struggles of their generation. From the influence of television and rock and roll on teenagers in the 1950s to gel pens and the Spice Girls in the 1990s, two things are always consistent. Children's love of the latest trend and panicked parents asking, how much is too much? But the important thing is that the world continues to move and we continue to adapt. So despite appearing like a unique modern issue, we do have previous generations of struggles we can draw inspiration from. Focusing on the core issues, like providing a healthy, balanced and varied life for our children, rather than fixating solely on the technology element of the problem, could be the starting point to tackling this issue. However, children will be children. In an ideal world, when you ask your children to focus, they would put their phones down. But sadly, this is not an ideal world, and sometimes, no matter how lovely your child is, the lure of the screen is just too much, and for adults too. So how do we use this lure to our advantage? How do we allow our young people to become resilient, to look up at the wide world around them and to make decisions that are in their best interest through an understanding of the situation and attention to their own choices in life? Schools and hospitals the pillars of a supportive society. These spaces can be scary, often hindered by stresses, anxiety and a lack of control. Let's take a closer look at how two UK cutting-edge companies have created products which help to read and regulate emotions to allow our younger generation to navigate through these places in a more resourceful and resilient way. So I'm Dom Raven, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Exploro. My background is I've spent the last 30 years or so owning and managing digital and creative agencies. But Explorer comes about through, through personal experience. So back in 2011, my daughter, who was 13 at the time, uh, was diagnosed with a rare bone cancer called Ewing sarcoma. Thankfully, she's eight years cancer free now, but, but when she was ill, nobody told her what to expect. And that left her feeling scared, anxious, and alone. And the net effect of that experience on my daughter eight years later is that she's reluctant to engage with health services. So uh, when she got the all clear, I started thinking um, about what I could do, uh, given my professional skills in, in software development and design, I started thinking about what I could do to improve the experience for, for other children, not just children with cancer, but for any child going through uh, what can be a terrifying uh, journey through hospital treatment. We came up with the idea of using augmented reality, artificial intelligence and games to build a, a, a mobile experience that would reduce anxiety for children. 
So about five years ago, I had a chance meeting with Dr. Peter Mark Fortune, who's clinical director of Royal Manchester Children's Hospital. And I explained our ideas to him, and he was really enthusiastic. And that gave us uh, the opportunity to put our ideas in front of patients and parents and clinicians in a hospital setting. Uh, we were only testing very, very early prototypes of Explorer at that stage. But it was obvious that there was a real, a real need for something that just made that hospital journey, that experience of going through hospital treatment, less scary and explained what was going to happen to children in a way that was age appropriate. It's not going to come as any news to anybody that, that many, many youngsters are difficult to drag away from their smartphones, iPads, whatever at all. But what technology offers is something that they are used to engaging with where you can actually steer them towards goals by rewarding them on that journey through what they enjoy in that game, whether it's extra levels, whether it's actually just making learning about their condition fun in some way. There are just countless opportunities of how you can bring them forward and ensure that actually they, they engage and they optimise uh, to make themselves more well um, and sometimes to completely cure themselves. So I set about uh, doing lots of desk-based research, looking on Google Scholar, trying to find out what research had been done in the past. And I came across a PhD paper by someone called Lucy Smith from the very early 2000s, um, which was exactly in the area that, uh, that we were looking at. So I eventually tracked Lucy down, uh, and it turned out that she was um, local to us. Uh, she's now Lucy Bray, of course. Health literacy is, is all about trying to ensure that people can have access to meaningful, individualised information and that they can understand the information that they're given and use that information to make choices and decisions about healthcare procedures and interventions and interactions. So Exploro really helps address health literacy because it's individualised information so children can dip in and can dip out. They can look at what they want to know but choose not to engage with those bits that they'd rather not. They can go back in at a later date, raises questions that they can then ask of the chatbot so it can answer the questions that they have. So it's really child-centered. And so I was involved in the research to develop Exploro. So we spoke to a hundred children in Manchester Children's Hospital and spent time asking children who were coming to hospital for procedures for things like x-rays, examinations, blood tests, those things that happen in hospital every day, which to health professionals are part of what happens but can be really anxiety provoking for children. We spent time talking to children to ask them what are your information needs. Research is really important to make sure that the, the technology that we're developing is robustly developed and evaluated. That's really important that we make sure that that's done well. But it's keen that we're working together to try and do that quickly. So we know that there can often be a 17 year gap between research and how interventions are implemented in practice. And that's too long for, for children and young people who continue to face um, anxiety and issues coming for procedure. I'm a designer by background and user experience, human-centred design is absolutely central to everything I've ever done. Uh, so for me it was absolutely crucial that for Explorer to be a success we needed to have a group of children advising us and guiding us. So about three years ago we formed our expert advisory board and we meet regularly throughout the year. We always test new features with them. They come up with ideas for new features. And the good thing about our expert advisory board is that like all children, they're brutally honest. Hi, my name is Emma. Hi, my name is Emmy. It's the fact that, well, that wasn't there for us, but it will be there for children in the future. And it's, it will help someone in the yeah. future. It will definitely help them get through something and help them, you know. It's nice to know that we'll be making someone smile, even if yeah. it's 20 years ago, later. <laughs> yeah, or even a year or yeah. anything that we are doing to help the younger or older generation happier and to make them, you know, feel like someone is taking care of them and someone yeah. it, it is understanding what's happening. I think they should write, this was made by kids your age. Like yeah. under the under where when it like loads, this was made by kids your age. 
people have like other people, people like have, you yeah people have experienced what they are going through yeah people know what it's like I guess. you are not alone <laughs> hi i'm pete i'm emma's dad and i'm eve emmy's mom so technology has has made such a, such a difference um, emma was diagnosed about 11 years ago and how technology's helped us through her time in hospital has been wonderful the opportunity um, to connect with with people and just to be able to access their various various things especially via the, via the internet i think there's something around technology around especially through a covid period and hospital being quite an isolating place where parents aren't able to necessarily spend time with their child and their other children at home families are split up so technology allows us as families to stay connected and speak to each other and spend time with each other and share our news and experiences really. For anyone making games in the future, we feel that they should be accessible for everyone and anyone to play with or be involved in. Making it accessible for like different people with different disabilities or different ages and yeah. Explorer is only a success because we've been able to work together with clinical experts, with research experts, with design experts, with technology experts, and most importantly, with child experts. What has this year been like for you? It's been tough because of COVID. Yeah. So I haven't got to see some of my family. Yeah. But, yeah, it has been okay. So I get to see more of my father now and my brother. What? What has this year been like for you? What has this year been like? Huh. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to cut me out. You know, I keep that out. Yeah. <laughs> what has this year... Just wait. What about you? What about you? Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Um... I think this year has been kind of weird because like you haven't been able to transport that many places or been able to see your friends or family. So yeah. My name is Alice. My name's Casey. I think technology is fun and it makes me happy. What has this year been like for you? Do you remember lockdown? Mm -hmm. Um, we had loads of homework and I got loads of stars I did mm -hmm. we, and I had uh, 714. What have you really enjoyed about this year? Probably going back to school and seeing all my friends again and seeing my family. I am glad that I can see my family now and that I get to see my friends in school. Yes. It's so nice that I can actually be back to school seeing my friends. It made me sad to see my friends on the face call, but I can actually see them. Especially that my best friend's phone, iPad is broken. Brilliant. Okay. School has played a, a really large part in my life, really, as a, as a student, um, as a teacher, and I suppose as a parent as well with my own children going to school. My, my first experiences in school as, as a youngster were, were, for me, particularly challenging. I was in a place, an environment where you had to watch your back. Uh, it was noisy. It was full of unpredictable behaviours, which were totally out of my control. For me, school was a place where I first experienced what I suppose we would call moments of anxiety. In fact, looking back, there was only one time while I was at school as a little boy that I would find complete calm, and it would happen once a week. Um, straight after our PE lessons, our sports lessons in, in the school hall. And at the end of the lesson, the teacher would let us lie on our backs with our eyes tight, tight closed. And we would be in absolute safe stillness because the teacher was just checking that we were okay. 
and I would savour that moment of calm. It was a game that, that we all called Sleeping Lions. And the rule of the game was this. You kept your eyes really tight shut and the teacher would creep around the hall and she would gently tap the sole of your foot. And that was a signal for you to get up and leave the hall as quietly as possible without waking the other sleeping lions. And you'd go back to class and then you get changed back into your school clothes. And I loved that game because that was my moment of sanctuary, that was my moment of safety during the melee of the school week. As a teacher, um, I was teaching um, eight-year-olds and, and I, I wanted them to find that peace that I had when I was in school too. I wanted them to become sleeping lions just for that brief moment. And this is how our biometric software came about. This is how Sleeping Lions came about. And it uses three main techniques. It uses immersion, it uses distraction, and it uses relaxation. And it uses these three things to help the pupils to find calm. And all the time that the children are becoming involved in these activities, the hardware and the software are working together to provide encouragement and feedback to the user. There's a little lion in the corner of the screen, he's called Tum or, or Tom, and he's a little animated lion and he, he's, he's always in the corner of the screen, he's waving back at them and, and giving them a thumbs up. But as, as things start to become more relaxed, so he starts to yawn a little and then he lies down and then he closes his eyes and yawns and he pulls a little blue blanket over himself and he goes to sleep. And that's the sleeping lion and that's the feedback. Tom the Lion is, is a lovely little character, designed obviously for a younger age group, but I think the future of him is he can grow, he can build. You know, he's designed very simply, designed to do a very simple task of slowly falling asleep. That was all we needed for the first stage of the test. I think beyond this, we can actually have him breathing, we can have him interacting, we can have him waving at the children, we can have him responding to visual cues. There's quite a lot of information we can get off a device that doesn't have to go any, any further than the device that can give that feedback to Tom to allow him to do the actions he needs to do. I think that's the fun part, it's actually having that, you know, having an animator work with a character and build an engaging character that maybe grows in age with you as well, that then can also wave at you, can, you you're looking after them. This is more than just simply just a virtual pet. This is somebody actually is looking after you, just as you're looking after it. Um, and Tom the Lion is just a little, lovely little character that should hopefully be able to do that for kids uh, and grow with them as they develop and get more confident. When Tom's sleepy, he goes to sleep. Um, yeah. He goes, he has a blanket and he lays down and he mm -hmm. closes his eyes. I believe that this resource has many uses beyond the classroom, um, supporting people in the wider community, older people, people with anxiety. I believe that it perhaps could support people who've suffered strokes to enable their blood pressure to be lowered, maybe have less reliance on medication. The possibilities seem endless right now. Uh, hi, I'm Dr Don Padfield and I'm a junior doctor uh, trained and working in Wales. I want to talk about anxiety and stress today. So stress is when you're like Like when you, so if you had, if you feel like, if your work's too hard for you, that's causing stress. We respond to real and imagined stresses. Now these can be anything from seeing something we've not seen before, hearing a loud noise, or indeed reading something we didn't expect. And these stresses can have different effects on our body. They have physiological effects uh, in a number of different ways these manifest themselves. As doctors, there's a number of methods that we are encouraged to use to decrease patients' anxiety and stress levels. When patients who have mental health problems, generalized anxiety disorder, depression, personality disorders, we can improve their anxiety and their response to stresses 
by teaching them techniques. Okay, what do you think about sleeping lions? I like it because it makes me happy and calm. And I like all the stuff you can do on it. How about you? It makes me calm and feel relaxed and it takes all the stress off me. And I love the games, but my favourite one is like the movement one, the garden. So, yeah, and I also love the maze. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like the videos and when the, the, the sea is splashing down and and the noises hit the sea goes. So the sleeping lions really helped me when I was mad and sad and I really like the VR and colouring and maze and I like the bird sound. Um, sleeping lions was really cool because I got to use the VR thing and it calmed me down. If we can utilise technology in healthcare, education and in life, maybe we can cut that queue down at the doctor's door. My name is Jane Davis and I am the head teacher at Ysgol Gymraeg Brinsherfel in Llwynhendi, Llanelli. We've been able to have the opportunity to try out sleeping lions at the school in our Year 3 class. This resource that um, we have tried in Year 3 has had a very positive impact on the pupils in the class. It has helped them to self-regulate, to breathe, to adopt the uh, techniques of meditation and mindfulness and it has had a very calming effect upon the class as a whole. In the year three classroom where I'm the only adult it has been of huge benefit to myself because as I previously stated the well-being of our learners is the most important part of our classroom. It's been proven that um, learners with better health and better well-being achieve better academically. Therefore, if I don't look after my learners' well-being, then nothing else is going to happen naturally. Um, it would be like missing out a crucial step in life. Playing games and accessing social media that aren't age appropriate for them trains their minds and brains to behave in ways that aren't acceptable in social society. This then rolls out and rolls back into the class and unfortunately the disruptive behaviour we see in class often leads back to these games and social media. The huge benefit of Sleeping Lions is that the, the children are taught to self-regulate their own emotions and they can use the um, Sleeping Lions app independently without adult support. Um, yeah. So on the app, whenever you get really relaxed, you start to fall asleep. And there's a thing you put on your it's supposed to go on your wrist but it goes like all the way up here heart track yeah. it, heart, it tracks your heartbeat and headphones oh, wow. come with it it tracks your heartbeat yes mm -hmm. to see how relaxed you are and then the lion will go to sleep if you're really relaxed you're here with us today at our labs in attic which is the assistive technologies innovation center um so we're based in swansea and um, what we focus on is um, health and well-being research. So we think particularly about the user experience of um, various pieces of technology, whether that be um, a device, an app, a system, um, piece of technology, um, and we basically understand how the user interacts with it and work to improve it. So it was fantastic to spend time in the classroom in Ascol Brinchevo with um, some young people I think for us as researchers to be able to observe uh, children, forgetting what it's like to be children ourselves, um, to understand how they see the world, um, what their kind of interests are, what their needs are, how they interact in the classroom, the classroom dynamic. Um, it was fantastic to be a part of and we learned so much. Um, I think one of the things that we're trying to do um, with the app is to help children to understand and start to learn about and explore the link between physical and mental well-being um, and explore the ways in which um, things that they do can control their well-being and their emotions. Sleeping Lions relies on significant media content and there's lots of it and I believe that the success of Sleeping Lions can be attributed to the fact that this has been really very much um, a together project. We've worked with 
teachers, um, filmmakers, storytellers, artists, people working in virtual reality, animators, software developers, universities, psychologists, neurobiologists, uh, and children. Um, so the key theme, I think, for the whole thing has been collaboration. It's been about togetherness. And I believe that together we can use technology to, to transform our world, and we can use technology to help us to find calm, and we can use technology to enable us to, just for one brief moment, to become sleeping lions. That's my hope anyway. It's just wonderful to hear these stories and how these innovative products are being used in real world settings to support young people. Through research, strategy and digital development, there are many possibilities for marrying tech with media to support our younger generations. Here is a quick look at some other fantastic work being done across the globe. It's fascinating how games, animation and real-time biofeedback can enable programme makers to assess content impact and worth through real-time audience feedback. And really encouraging to know how this may be beneficial to more meaningful design moving forward. Through this video, you have gained a deeper insight into some of the solutions out there that are being used alongside technology to create a more resilient and resourceful society. In these stories of creation and innovation, a sense of togetherness is fundamental to communicate and strengthen their impact. It was Fred Rogers who suggested that, in times of stress, the best thing we can do for each other is to listen with our ears and our hearts, and to be assured that our questions are just as important as our answers. So, let's keep on asking those questions together. <laughs>